Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Sound Drives. Now, the time has come. The GT Finals have begun in a very strange form, in a new form, in the form of a GT Finals challenge. So as you can see here, uh, Deutschland Tour GT Finals. I, I'm pretty sure if it's Deutschland Tour, it's probably going to be Nürburgring tracks. Uh, but we have nine attempts and also we have the GT Open with six attempts, making it six nine. Haha, <laughs> very nice, very funny. Uh, GT Open, here are the prizes. Uh, you can basically get an aluminum German pack a premium German pack and here is the collectible uh, super rare it is the Ford F-150 Lightning to be fair it is a collectible car in real life so that's pretty cool uh, but it isn't really a, a, a gameplay changing card uh, and then prizes for the GT finals obviously you get the Citroen GT you get a ceramic pack on the 9th uh, round and a carbon fiber on the 18th round and then finally on the 26th round you get the Citroen GT uh, Last but not least you have the GT triple crown I haven't gotten three tokens yet because well you can't get three tokens yet I think you can get three tokens on Saturday or something like that But here you get a bunch of cash. You also get a driver's choice premium uh, a Nissan Silvia uh, Which is a really random ultra uh, European Revolution CF that is huge and finally the GMC Acadia Denali an F so that's actually pretty cool. Really excited for the GT Triple Crown. I really want to get my third token. I'm actually really excited for these prizes. I think they're amazing. And obviously, uh, you also have an avenue of getting unlimited German 2010 to 2014 carbon fibers. The question is, should you get unlimited 2010 to 2014 carbon fibers? Is it worth it? Well, that's exactly what we're going to answer today. So welcome to an episode of what can you get from that pack. And obviously, the pack that we're reviewing is the 2010 to 2014 carbon fiber. So if we jump into the GT Series 3, we can see that this is basically a, a Tri-Series final, right? It's the same requirements uh, as the Tri-Series challenge. It has super high uh, RQ limit and it kind of gives out, you know, good prizes to the top 10. So it is very similar to a GT Tri-Series uh, or a Tri-Series, but it just isn't one. And once again, we are given a second avenue, two different avenues to get unlimited to 2010 to 2014 carbon fibers but like i said is it worth it so let's get into it let's click play let's go into required and let's select this and then let's go into filter and select all cars but before i review the entire pack let me just show you the track sets now this is a bit different because these aren't track sets for the final but these are track sets for gt series number three which is very similar to a final the only difference is that you can't even get the prize car from this but you do get a carbon fiber if you get in the top 10. so here are the tracks i'm going to go by them really quickly all dry all all low. Uh, first one is Half Mile Hairpin Mountain Slalom, Mountain Hairpin Mountain Twisty Road. Second is Test Bowl Indoor Karting Fast Circuit, Twisty Circuit, Fast Circuit. Third is Mountain Twisty Road, Mountain Slalom Karting Circuit, Half Mile Mountain Twisty Road. And then the last one is Monaco Narrow Streets, Twisty Circuit, Monaco G Force Test, G Force, and Fast Circuit. Basically, one hybrid, one fast, three twisty. So let's review the pack. Let's go into filter right now, and we can get. 15 ultra rares, 20 epics, and 13 legendaries. Obviously, when it comes to the challenge, you're probably gonna need super rares and rares and uncommons, but we can get them anyway from a carbon fiber. I guess you can get the super rare, uh, but when it comes to the, the challenges, I mean, not I guess, you can get a super rare, but when it comes to the challenges, there isn't really any key super rare, key rare. It's kind of just if you have it or not. Uh, as long as it's max, it's probably gonna get you through. But let's start off with the ultra rares. So, obviously, I'm just going to judge them in a a general sense. Uh, I'm not even going to judge them in terms of a final because there really isn't one. I guess I can say that I can judge them in terms of this event, but you know, it's just not significant enough. You're not winning the Citroen GT from the event. So I'm just going to be judging these cars in a general sense. So if you've unpacked them, if you can use them in the long run. So let's get into it. Ultra rares, we start off with a bunch of Oh, not a bunch of hot garbage. Basically, the three ultra rares I don't, I don't have are the ultra rares you don't want. Uh, the OPC is actually decent. I have two of it. Um, I know in the past I called it a disappointment. It is a disappointment in relative terms to the Lotus Elise 135. But if it is a German event, it holds its own. But yes, in a general sense, it's a bit of a disappointment. But in terms of German events, it's okay. Um, these three are uh, really bad. So I don't have them, as you can see. Uh, and then moving on to the rest of the ultra 
firmwares. I have all of them actually, and they're all actually okay. The 640D, I would say, is one of the best keepers from this ultra rare collection from the pack. And I know what you're thinking, Blossom, what are you talking about? Why is the 640D so important to you? Uh, the 640D has a very, very, very powerful niche and that is the fact that it's performance tires and it has a uh, uh, diesel uh what's the there it goes the fuel type is diesel uh there are not a lot of cars that has performance tires and they're also diesel i think when it comes to ultra rare there are only two and the other one is medium ground clearance and this one handles better so this is the best twisty performance tire diesel ultra rare in the game if that makes sense and that's why the 640d is actually so cool the maybach 62 is also amazing it has the mra it has a low 0 to 60, um, and it has standard tires. So whenever there's standard tire times 5 events in clubs, and it's Dragon City, the 62 Land Delay is like the second best thing to the Cadillac 16. It's actually the third best thing because there is another Maybach in the Epic ranks, but guess what? Nobody has it. I know more people that own the 16 than the Epic Maybach, which is a bit sad because I actually really want the Epic Maybach. It's actually on my wish list, but I can see why most people fuse it because, you know, it's like RQ67 or something like that. Um, so moving on here, uh, uh, the 435 is decent. It's a nice little, like, medium RQ. Like, it's not too high. It's not too low in the ultra rare range for a medium ground clearance car. It hits about 87 handling in the 0 to 60 is respectable. Definitely would have a car maxed out. You know what? I'm just going to go into all cars, uh, my cars, because I have the rest of the ultra, so I might as well show you what they look like maxed, right? So the OPC 4295, Maybach 4070, and this is obviously uh, 996. Uh, sorry, this is 996. The OPC is 699 um, and then next up we have the 640D like I was talking about fantastic machine uh, 435 it's also pretty decent the 328 is not amazing I maxed it out because I was bored it was one of those so in my opinion not a keeper uh, the 650i also has decent stats for an RQ59 but it's just not a keeper because the handling just isn't high enough I feel like if it's an ultra rare and it's not specifically made for the drag you need at least 90 handling 90 handling to be competent you know what I mean? Um, and then moving on with 2K Mons, I got one four five nine four. I think this is 233. Yep. Uh, what makes this car special is that it has really good MRA and the top speed is not too bad. It's not a keeper, but it's also not trash. Um, the BMW X6, it held me in the prelims, or I guess I should say, uh, should say GT Finals or GT Series 2. Um, but, you know, I'm going to call it the prelims anyway, because, you know, I'm used to calling it that. Uh, the BMW X6 is a pretty okay car. It's not the best, uh, but it gets the job done. 640i, it's the same thing as the X6. And a lot of the ultra rares in here are just BMWs. Oh, sorry, that's my alarm. <laughs> Let me turn that off real quick. Um, yeah, I know. I had an alarm set for 2.55 a.m. because that's when I wake up now. <laughs> I just, I'm just laughing at the thought of that because that's just how messed up my sleep schedule is um and yes i just woke up by the way so my nose is a little runny my nose is always runny when i just wake up that's why and usually i don't record when i just wake up because i would just be like blur but like today i'm just doing it anyway um so yeah this pack is a lot of bmws and a lot of meh right so after that same thing with the 330 you know when it has its niche it shines but outside of it you don't really use it that much, or at least I don't really use it that much. And then the final two cars we can get is the Audi S1, which Leo and I agree is probably one of the worst RQ64s in the game. This and like the Subaru. And then we have the Mercedes AMG S63. In my opinion, this is the most useful ultra rare that you can get from this pack. The Mercedes AMG S63 is a fantastic car. I have one uh, drag spec, uh, which has the same 0 to 60 as a BTR. And one thing that the S Class has over a lot of the best ultra rare drag in the game is that it has traction control and ABS. All of the other amazing dragsters in uh, the ultra rare ranks are usually cars that don't have either ABS or traction control or both. You know, the Tamora doesn't have either, I think. Uh, the Kutosh doesn't have one of the two, and the Charger 3 doesn't have one of the two. I'm pretty sure the BTR doesn't have either ABS or traction as well. So this is a huge plus for the S63. Also, it is medium ground clearance, so I have have one for the city street spec and as you can see 233 it's 3684 it's not good on vanilla city streets like vanilla city streets medium and small but it really excels on like monaco city streets uh no sorry not monaco city streets it excels on ocean city streets the one with the car wash so this one is actually a really great car so in terms of ultra rares i would say the real keepers would be the opc extreme just for really niche circumstances so that's one maybach 62 bmw 640d uh 
Um, the, I'm not gonna count any of these. All of these ultra, uh, middle ultra rares, they're just meh. They're not bad, but they're not good, right? I don't use them that often. Like, the 650i, I think this is my first, like, max German Renaissance car. Uh, 170 races only for 709 days. That's not a lot. Uh, it's a car that goes far neglected in my garage. And the last keeper is the AMG S63. So, three ultra rares are just dead keepers out of the entire collection. So, let me, uh, let me go back into all cars. So, 15. So, uh, sorry, not three, four. So, four out of 15. So, the odds aren't really good there. So, let's move on to the Epic Collection now. Oh, and there you go. That's the Maybach I was talking about. It's not 66, it's 67. I do want this. Not a lot of people have this. I think it's a bit underrated. It's just a better version of the 62. And it's a great RQ saver to the Cadillac 16. And that's why I want it. I've unpacked it once and I regret fusing it myself. Uh, so, let's move on to the Epics. Uh, G63, uh, hot garbage. It's a Joker car in the series I have of Android. Um, the BMW uh, Guess the Car series, uh, BMW 1 series as well, it's not very good. It does, oh sorry, I was gonna say at least it does have medium ground clearance. That just makes it even worse, buddy. Uh, that's bad. Uh, the Maybach, now I already, you already know what I feel about this. Most people think it's Fuse, but in my opinion, if I got it again, I would definitely keep it and max it out. I wouldn't max it out soon, but it's definitely a car I really, really want because it's like the best standard tire epic dragster. And that's why I want it. It also has the MRA, a higher top speed and a lower zero to 60 compared to the uh 62 there you go by 0.3 seconds uh 535 volkswagen amg e63 are all hot garbage i've had this before uh, twice and i've fused it twice um the x3 is bad c63 is bad uh m6 as well as the m3 crt is bad the came on gts is also pretty bad but i have this max 3494 the only reason why i have it max however is because it used to be an ultra rare that's why um but now it's an epic again actually pretty interesting about this it it started off life as i think an ultra then it went up to epic then it went down to ultra and then it went up to epic again it was very strange um but yeah i think finally it cemented its place here because it got a stat change that's why it went back up um but yeah all these epics i have to say in my opinion are pretty underwhelming the only good one that we've seen so far is the maybach 57 everything else i really don't use it's hot garbage um the next useful car is the roof 3800 and i don't even use it that often it's decent but i barely get to use it when you think about it every single tri-series we had coming up to this one has always had some you know uh useful roof like the compressor or the btr2 or the rct or the rgt we haven't had a chance for the 3800s to shine and i think that is because it's a bit of a newer car and that's one thing i have to say about this pack it's a little newer you know this isn't a 2000 pack so there is a correlation here newer cars tend to perform better so we'd be seeing a little better cars on the high end here um the roof 3800 i would have to say is kind of just like it's a good car it's the best handling epic roof but it's never had its day to shine which i guess is a good thing because then we can expect one to come in the future so moving on to the rest of the epics now now this is where we kind of get a little bit of good news i talked about the s4 right because the s4 is hot garbage um but yes let's look at the final six over here i would have to say that um i would say four or mm, if i was being really strict i would say three three out of the six are useful uh and that three would be the amg sls roadster this is a keeper and a blossom choice the bmw 750d is not a blossom choice but it's close to being one and the bmw i8 these three are definite keepers these three not so much i said four maybe and if i was being strict three because i was kind of leaning towards saying the amg ml 63 is a bit of a keeper it's not bad okay it's not a bad one it's just that all surface tire cars in general barely get their chance to shine in the game but in terms of an all surface tire car in itself the ml 63 isn't actually that bad it doesn't have as good of an mra as the bentega but it has better handling i think compared to the bentega and it has basically identical stats to a legendary all surface tire car which i will show you in a bit in fact let me show you right now because i've already told you what are the good epics i would have to say sls 750 and the i8 uh the roof i would count in it and i would say the maybach so so in my opinion, if I was being really strict, I would say five of the Epics I would be really happy to get in the general sense. So roof, Mercedes, BMW, BMW, and the Maybach. And let me just show you real quick. So if I go into filter and I go into all cars, um, and now I need to actually get uh, get the filter off and go into my cars, my bad. Um, let me just show you a quick little comparison where the ML63 stands. Um, so as you can see, 4276, I compare this to my legendary Range Rover SVR, 
4376. So, um, and also this is a heavier car, I believe, because this is 2,335 pounds, and this one is 2,345 pounds. So actually the Mercedes is only heavier by 10 pounds. Wow. But there you go. 4276. The 4376 were a legendary, and they both have MRA, if I believe, in the 70s. So yeah, in terms of an all-surface tire car in itself, the ML63 actually is pretty good. But it's just the all-surface tire niche that really brings it down because we never see it. We see standard tires a lot in clubs, but we don't see all surface tire. So let's go back to the pack now because we just need to end off of the legendary. So go into all cars. There are 13 legendaries that we can get from this pack and all of them are basically just lower end Mercedes, uh, a bunch of SLSs. And you know, honestly, I love the SLS. It's a shame that they're really bad in the game, but I really love the SLS in real life. I've actually driven one myself. I've driven the 2010 uh, AMG SLS, same color as well. Um, but yeah, none of these are actually really good. Good. None of them hit 100 handling, which is incredibly sad for a rear wheel drive car. And the 0 to 60s aren't really that great either. I mean, they're 0 0.1 0 to 60 off a Challenger Hellcat. Top speed is pretty high, but it's not definitely as high as some other legendaries in the game that go over 200. The SLS Black Series is okay, uh, but that's all I can really say about it. It's just okay. Um, the other two, the GT and the SLS, aren't really good. Uh, the 911 GT3 is actually a really good car. It doesn't have MRA, but it just handles really well. Uh, um, so I would keep that. The RS6 is a good epic as well. So I guess you can say that's six of the epics. What did I say? Six, right? One, two, three, four. Uh, Maybach um, and the Audi. So six. You know what? I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. If we, if it's an all surface tire event, then the ML63 is actually really good. So seven, seven. So seven out of twenty. That's not bad. It's less than half though. And we've had packs where more than half of the epics were actually useful. Um, the rest of the legendaries here, Panamera and R8 are hot garbage. But everything else I would say is worth having. So that's six really good legendaries. Um, I'm a bit on the fence with the 911 Turbo, but at least it'll hit 100 handling. Uh, R335 and the GT2 both have MRA of over 100. So these two are fantastic. Actually, this has 100. I don't think this has over 100. I think the R335 has like 98. It's like 98 or 102, one or the other. But they're both really great. Gumperts also are fantastic legendaries. They are really ugly, but they're fantastic legendaries. And the 911 Turbo S has just really low 0 to 60. Hits 100 handling, four wheel drive. Uh, uh, it's a decent car. I would say that I don't think it deserves RQ93, but it definitely is more of like an RQ91 car, which is still very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's just the low end legendaries, which are a bit of a shame. So out of 13 legendaries, I'd be really happy with getting six, seven. Seven of them. Um, seven of them, actually, I'd be really happy with getting 11 of them because I'm a huge Mercedes fanboy and I love the SLS. But for you, the neutralists, I would say that these legendaries, I mean, you should keep every legendary regardless, but these legendaries aren't that good. So I would have to say for you, if you want to feel like you get your money's worth with the legendaries, I would have to say only seven out of the 13 are really worth your time. The Panamera and R8 are just universally trash, but at least the R8 always feels feels like it ends in a lot of tags and niches. So this has a special like unique perk going for it. The Panamera, I just never see, honestly, just never see. But yeah, that's going to be the pack. It's not the worst pack that I've ever seen. It's not like the Koenigsegg Yesco pack. Um, but it's not the best pack that I've ever seen either. In my opinion, I think the 2007 and 2009 carbon fibers that we saw in recent months before were actually better than this, uh, which is ironic because like I said, you know, these are newer cars, so they tend to have better stats, but that doesn't seem the case because this doesn't seem to be a better pack. So although there are unlimited amounts of this 2010 to 2014 German carbon fiber, I don't think it's worth opening. So that's my verdict. I don't think it's worth opening it. Um, the best cars from this pack would be like the SLS, um, and the Maybach and I guess you can say you're better off opening a Mercedes pack but the Mercedes pack is probably um, as filtered with just filler as much as this pack so if you want the SLS Roadster I probably just wait for like a German convertible pack or something like that because then you can get the Mercedes Roadster and you can also get that roof um, and I think it lowers the chances of absolute garbage I'm actually not too sure I'm, I'm actually interested to check it out now so manufacturer uh, country sorry Germany uh, miscellaneous convertible Roadster collections and tags non-prize cars let's check out the epics 
Yeah, you're better off with a German convertible pack. This pack looks a lot better because you can get cars like the AMG, uh, the Boxer Spider, the 3000, the Synchro, uh, sorry, uh, Roadster W12, i8 Roadster, and the AMG SLS. So those are actually all pretty decent. Uh, but then again, all these are trash. So yeah, the German cars, right, it's just a lot of filler everywhere, no matter how you filter it. But that's gonna be it. Um, basically, if you want to get the Citroen GT, why would you? Then I would say open the pack. But I would say that because there's no Tri-Series, the stress isn't really there and the height of the competition isn't really that high um, so there isn't really a point of getting these in access uh, so yeah that's my verdict I don't think you should open it but let me know what you think in the comments below uh, if you do not listen to me anyway and do open it let me know what you get but anyway I hope you guys have a great day I'm gonna stay safe wash your hands and blossom out peace Bring the toast in the back and we going berserk with the guns on the rack and we taking it count to the sound of the crack running from us with the pop and the because we're making the moves and the sound of the p calling the shots of bitch looking at me and we taking it count to the flow in the back with the drop in the cash you know this ain't a prank moving like water talking with fire bounce back under cover to mama's desire keep riding the flames like a man on the mission rejected again but you better go listen pop up at billy run up the billy my face on the boards and you all gonna see me i woke my wrist to look guys here's yachty flexing the club trying to really louis hey